Hello and welcome to this Opal Systems demonstration of the multi-DSLA test system with the VPP Plus Advanced SIP Client. VPP is Voxport Packet. And this client may be thought of as a reference SIP phone. For testing purposes, it makes and receives SIP calls either between other similar clients or with other SIP entities. It may work with or without a SIP server. One of the really advanced things and interesting things about this client is that it's capable of producing packet impairments which may be random or may be synchronized very precisely to the speech signals which are being used for testing or indeed may be taken from a packet capture. So it's really very flexible in that respect. Another great feature that it has is the ability to manipulate AMR codec rates so that the TX rate can be changed and codec mode requests, CMR, can be made to the far end of the network. Now I've switched to the multi-DSLA controller and uh, here as you can see the VPP clients are represented by these blue coloured dots or nodes in the control system and uh, what we can do is to have these call each other or have VPP1 call VPP2 by dragging and dropping a line over there. What you may be able to see in this area now is the some of the SIP transactions showing that the call has been set up and the blue dotted line which progresses across the screen represents the real speech file, uh, a WAV file originally which has been encoded and transmitted as RTP across the network. The green line suggests that we have a relatively good speech quality score for that, but we can double click and investigate in a little more detail. We see first of all the auto call setup information. This simple ladder diagram uh, shows us uh, in some detail about the SIP transaction setting up and clearing down the call. And the speech quality analysis is available in the next view. And here we can see that we're using the, uh, the very latest version 2.4 uh, of Polka. And it has returned a score of 4.28. Uh, this, by the way, is using the highest bit rate of the AMR codec um, in the wideband mode. The Malden representation here shows the perceptual energy of the speech signal, the top one being the reference signal which we used to play out into the network, and the second one here which is the degraded signal, the corresponding degraded signal. After PESC has processed, and or Polka in this case, has processed these, uh, the difference between them here, the error surface, uh, represents the audible errors and I should have mentioned that we have a time scale running along here horizontally and we have perceptual energy in all cases on the vertical scale. Now let's see what happens if we introduce some impairments into that process. I'll do that here by activating the packet impairment mode and let me show you this profile which we've set up here called packet impairment 1 and let's edit that so we can see uh, in the top trace the waveform of the speech file, the reference speech file, which we're using for the testing in this case. It's a female voice. Uh, it has two sentences in the classic sentence pair structure. And you can see that synchronized with that, we have here some packet loss, four consecutive packets lost at that stage, and some here some jitter, which we've introduced uh, deliberately towards the end of the first sentence. Now we can view that in a little more detail by using the zoom facility and now as I click on here you can see that that's packet number 124, 125, 126 and 127 so four consecutive packets uh, are going to be dropped there every time we use this profile and over here we have four milliseconds of jitter at packet 142 and then some other packets here also affected by jitter to uh, uh, varying degrees after that. And apart from that, if we go back to the full view, there are no impairments for the rest of the eight seconds that this measurement will take. So I'm going to close that window and then let's try running that. I'll clear that summary away first of all. Let's run that test. 
and see what result we get this time. So the call is being set up in the same way as before. Uh, the speech signal then comes out from VPP1 across to VPP2 through the network with the impairments in the packet stream as that happens. And this time we have a yellow line indicating that the quality is not quite as good as it was last time. Once again, the ladder diagram, but what we're really interested in here is the speech quality analysis and see how the score has plummeted to 2.92. Um, and you may be able to see just here in this area where the error surface uh, is a little more pronounced uh, and that is exactly around the time that the four packets have been dropped. Incidentally, we still use the legacy speech quality metric PESC. One of the reasons for that is that visually it does give sometimes a rather more useful a rather more pronounced display of what's happening and here we can see in this case that that uh, certainly is so. We can see a little break here in the degraded file corresponding to those four packets so the reference signal is intact at that point and we can see that there is a missing signal there uh, showing up as a, an audible error at that point around the just over the 2.5 second mark. Okay, so let's now go back to the task list and let's change that packet impairment back to inactive. And this time, let's make the rate change uh, overlay active. And I'll show you in a very similar way what this is doing. Uh, you may remember a few minutes ago I mentioned that we can change the TX codec rate, that's the transmit codec rate, which VPP1 will use. And that's the blue line on here. So it will start at rate 1 and at precisely 4 seconds, again remember this is synchronized with the test signal that we're using, it will switch to mode 8, uh, where it will remain uh, for 2 seconds until we reach 6 seconds and then switch back again to rate 1. I'm not using the CMR in this case, the codec mode request, um, but you can see here that I could program that in a similar way to make requests of the far end for the rate to be used. So I'm going to close that and clear that summary and run this third test in the same way. Once again, the call is being set up. The speech signal is being transmitted from one end to the other. Uh, remember with the codec rate change incorporated, this time we have a green line once again. We're not so concerned with the call setup information, but we are interested to see Let's look first of all at the Polka score. It's 3.97, so somewhere between the two previous scores. Um, we have these rather convenient markers to display exactly where the rate change took place. So we were at the 8.85 kilobits per second rate uh, right up until the four second point. And then between four seconds and six seconds, as you may remember, we switched to the 23.85 kilobits per second rate and then we drop back to the 8.85 rate again uh, after or from six seconds onwards. Now what can we see in the error surface here corresponding to this? Well we can see that the errors around here just about possible to see that they're of a lower order than they are here or at the beginning. And again, if we switch to the PESC view, we may see that a little more clearly. Uh, I think we do. Here we have this uh, fairly consistent shape of the errors. And then when we are using the faster codec rate, which should be more efficient uh, in terms of quality of transmission, we see that the uh, corresponding errors there are rather of a smaller order uh, before reverting again at the six second point to the rather fatter shape that we see over here. One other thing we can do with this is to replay the signal which is uh, usually quite interesting so let's do that now. These days the chicken leg is a rare dish. The hogs were fed chopped corn and garbage.
So that's the end of the demonstration. I hope you found that interesting and uh, do contact us if there's something more that you'd like to know. Thank you very much for watching and listening.